Hello, my name is Miss Kimberly. I'm with the EVPL Red Bank Library, and this video is part of our series of STEAM activities. Now, STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And today's activities are actually going to combine two of those. We're going to start off with a little bit of science, and then we're going to use that science to create a little bit of art. Now, for the science part of this, you need to start off with some coffee filters. Now, if you don't have coffee filters, you can just use white paper. It's just going to make the experiment a little bit slower. Uh, you need some pencils, some markers in all different colors, some scissors and tape, and you're going to want some clear glasses, clear cups or glasses, and you want them about one third of the way full of water. You're gonna need several of these, all right? So we're gonna study a little bit of color. Now, where do you think, how do you think people make different colors? Like you've seen the rainbow with its uh, red, green, orange, blue, violet, all different colors, but how are those colors made? So we're gonna see how people can combine different colors to make new colors. So let's see if we can find out what colors some of these colors are made of. So we're gonna start off, take your coffee filter, and you're gonna to need to cut these into strips about an inch wide. So you're gonna cut it like this. So you've got a nice strip. Now you can compare it to your cup because you want it to be about as long as the cup. So go up to the top of the cup or even a little bit shorter. So, yep, that's a good length for that one. So you're gonna need a couple more of these. So I'll cut this one. Again, cut it just about to the length of the cup. Let's start off with three. And whoop, a little bit too tall. Okay, we have three strips. They're about as tall as the cup. Now we need to pick some colors. How about let's start off with a nice red, maybe a green, and let's do, hmm, how about blue? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your marker and you're gonna draw a line about in the middle of the paper. You want it to be just high enough so that when it's above where the water is in the cup. So about halfway on the paper should work. Once you draw your line, we're gonna do the same with the red. There you go, we see we've got red. All right, we're gonna start off with the green one. Now you're gonna take your pencil, you're gonna put the, the paper so it's right at the top of the pencil. The top of it is right on top of the pencil like this. You're gonna take just a little bit of tape and tape it to there. So you see now it hangs down from the pencil. Now the reason is this, is we're gonna put the bottom end of this in the water and that uh, coffee filter is gonna start soaking up the water and it's gonna come up all the way to the color and then we're gonna see what happens when it hits the color. So we're gonna take this and dip it so the end of the coffee filter is in the water and just set it on top. We're gonna to let it go. You can actually, you can see the water start creeping up. So that's the green. I'm gonna put it up close so you can start to see what it's doing. So we're gonna do this with the red, same thing. Pick another pencil. Put the top of the coffee filter strip right on the pencil and tape it on. So we're gonna take another cup and dip that. So the end, oh, that was a little long, but that's okay. And you can see the water starts going up that. Now it's gonna take a, take a little bit for it to get up to the top, that's okay. We have to be a little patient with this. How about, and let's see, we need I dropped it. We need the blue. 
So we're going to take our blue. Oh, you can see on the red one, the water has already reached the color. So go ahead and watch what it does when it reaches it. Another pencil. Another strip. And tape that onto the top. So we have another cup. And this will be the blue. So we have green, red, and blue. And you can see the water is working its way up there. While it does that, go ahead and cut a couple more strips so we have them ready for, so we can start doing some other colors. Oh, you see what it's doing? It's starting to stretch the color out. There we go. All right, we have three more. Now again, we want them to say about the same height as the cup, so we need to trim these up a little bit. Yep, about that high should do. All right, now you can see that it's really moving up. Now what is the water moves up and it gets to the where the marker is, it's gonna grab onto that ink color and it's gonna start pulling it up with it all the way up. There you go. So let's see what other colors should we do. How about, how about purple? This is one, I like this color. There we go. Another pencil. Oops, put that upside down. That wouldn't work very well. All right. Oh, now they're really starting to move. And how about, oh, this might be an unusual one. How about brown? What this does, this will help us see which colors make up each of these colors. What colors did they put together to make these colors? Oh, those are really moving now. So let's get the purple one in a glass. <clears throat> there it goes. Move it over here. All right. And the brown one. There we go. So we've got five different colors here and they're all moving. Now, now that it's starting to stretch some of the colors out, you may be noticing something. How about, let's see if we looked at the green one. Let's move it so you can see it much better. If you see in the green, if you look at the bottom of the green, you can actually see some yellow starting up to show up there. And if you look at the top of the green, there's actually some blue showing up there. So we've still got the green in the middle, but on top we have blue and on bottom of yellow. So what do you think that means? That means is to make green, they had to take blue and yellow and put them together and that created green. But when the water started stretching it, those colors started separating. So you got, could see the individual colors in there. So we now know that to make green, we combine yellow and blue. But what about red? I'm not seeing any other colors in here. All I see is red. Well, that's actually how it's supposed to be because red is what is called a primary color. Now, a primary color is a color that is not made up of any other color. It's just red. And actually, if you look, the blue is doing the same thing. I don't see any other colors in here, just blue. So we know red and blue are primary colors. You don't have to combine anything to make red and blue. But green is not a primary color because you had to put yellow and blue together to make the green. Now it's getting really noticeable. You see the yellow on the bottom and the green just on the edge of the top. All right, so we'll move those out of the way. So now we know how uh, to make green, to mix those together. 
We know we don't need to mix anything to make blue and red. How about purple? They might think what colors you might have to mix together to make purple. Well, if you look, some colors are starting to show up. You can just see them. And here we have brown. What colors do you think you'd have to mix together to make brown? That's a confusing one. And actually, there's also one more primary color. There's red and blue. Can you think of what the other one is? Well, I'm not going to tell you because I think you need to experiment a little bit. See if you can figure out which one, which color is the other primary color. So you have to try lots of different colors. See if you can figure it out. But you might be able to guess when you start seeing the combination showing up. All right, purple is starting to separate a little bit. If you look on the top of it, you can start, you start seeing some blue showing up. And if you look on the bottom, it looks kind of like pink. So like a really light red. Let's move it closer so you can see it. You see the blue showing up on the top? Yep. Now brown is an interesting one. I am seeing if you look at the bottom, there's some yellow showing up. All right, so we know to make brown, you have to put some yellow in it. But what other colors do you have to put in it? Well, let's see what is showing up here. Well, it's still moving. Well, that's moving. Should we try one more color? Okay, we did green. We did red and blue, purple and brown. How about orange? What colors do you think you'd have to combine together to make orange? Well, we need one more strip. Ah, here we go. Oop, is that long enough? Yep. All right. Let's put some orange on here. Get another cup of water. Tape it on to your pencil. And let's get that going. Got it just dipping in there. There. Now that's going to take a little bit to move. All right, we've got purple, orange, and brown. Oh, you can definitely see some yellow showing up on the bottom of the brown. Let's bring it up so you can see a little better. See the yellow showing up? And I think I'm seeing a little bit of red in there. Maybe some other colors. Oh, you can definitely see the blue separating in the purple. It looks like blue and pink. <laughs> So though, while those separate, let's set this over to the side. So if purple needs other colors to combine it together, then that's not one of the primary colors. So we still know one is red and one is blue, but which of the others? Now brown is not a primary color, because you can see some yellow and a little bit of red starting to show up in there. Let's see, have we gotten up in the, oh, it's get, getting up to the orange. Oh, you can see the bottom of it. It's just starting to separate a little bit. And I see some yellow showing up. There you go. Now you can see it pulling yellow down at the bottom. Let me move it closer so you can see. You see a little bit of yellow there? So what colors do you think made, went together to make orange? Yellow? And if you look at the top edge, you can start seeing some red showing up. So to make orange, we have to put yellow and red together. All right, now how about, let's see if you can try one yourself. How about black? What color do you think you'd have to put together to make black or gray? So why don't you try some of those at home yourself and see what colors you come up, can come up with. All right, so we've done a little bit of science. Now we saw how you can combine different colors Oh, now you can see on the green, it really separated. You can really see the blue on the top. And you can see the yellow on the bottom. So the longer you let it sit, the more and more it'll separate. And the more you'll start seeing more of the individual colors. Yep, same with the purple. You see more blue on the top. And you see more red on the bottom. 
back in there. Okay. So we're gonna set these over to the side. So that was our bit of science. We saw how you take different colors, combine them together to make new colors. So how do you think we can use that in some art? Well, the art we're going to do is called Sharpie tie-dye. Now tie-dye is when you let the colors spread. You've probably seen tie-dye t-shirts. See all the colors spread all over a shirt. Well, that's a little bit what we're gonna do. And we're gonna see how these colors merge together and make new colors. So remember the combinations that we saw when we were doing the science. So for this part, we need a piece of white cloth, like a t-shirt is really good, or a handkerchief is also good. Now, if you don't have a white t-shirt, you can use a light colored t-shirt, just not all of the colors might not show up as well. So white is where they show up the best. You're also going to need some Sharpie markers. We have some Sharpie markers here. Some rubbing alcohol. And an eyedropper. Now, if you don't have an eyedropper, you can just use a small spoon to drip it down. So, if you have a t-shirt, you might want to use like a piece of cardboard or a paper plate or something like that and put it in between the layers. That just keeps what you're doing on the top from soaking into the back. If you don't mind it doing that, then go ahead. Then you'll, ha then you'll have colors on both sides of it. All right, let's put this in here. All right, so I've got a nice clear space of fabric to use. Spread out so it's nice and flat. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our Sharpie markers. And let's pick a color to start off with. How about, let's start off with a little blue. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw, let's see, let's put this up so you can see it a little better. Draw a little dot and maybe draw some lines around it. Just need a really simple pattern. Let's see, let's draw some more lines. So I made like a star pattern, like that. Now remember how the colors combine to make new colors? So, let's see, do you remember what we had to combine, combine to make purple? We needed blue and red. So let's add a little red to this one and we'll see what it does. Let's put some red in between right here. Some more red lines. Looks a little bit about like a firework, doesn't it? There we go. So we've got our blue, we've got some red. But let's put some other colors in just to see what it does. How about, what do you think if we had blue and red, what would happen if we added yellow? Now, what did blue and red together make? That made purple. But what would happen if you combine purple with yellow? Do you know what color that would make? I have no idea. So let's see if we can find out. All right, let's put some yellowed lines up here. Looks a little bit like a sun now. I made them go all the way around. All right. See? We've got blue, red, and a little bit of yellow. So we got some really simple colors down. So now we want the colors to mix together and that's where the rubbing alcohol comes in. So take your lid off it, get a little bit in your eyedropper. Now, if you don't, as I said, if you don't have an eyedropper, you can use a small spoon and you're just gonna drip it on here. We're gonna start off, we're gonna drip it right in the center, right where our blue dot is there. And you'll see 
it starts spreading out from there and further. Now, once it stops spreading, go ahead and start dripping the rubbing alcohol a little farther out, like I'm spreading it all around. Now look at how the colors are spreading. We'll get a little more rubbing alcohol. We haven't gotten to the yellow yet. So let's see if what happens when we start mixing the yellow in. There, now you can see them spreading all over the place. There, you can see a little bit where the red and the blue started mixing together. They make a little bit of purple. Do you want it to keep spreading? Just add a little bit more here or there where it, when you see it starts slowing down. And if you look where the blue and the yellow started mixing, you're starting to see a little bit of green where the blue, where the red and the yellow mixing mix, you start to see a little bit of orange. There, now you can see it spreading out and you start making colors. Now that's a really simple one. You can make these patterns as fancy and as intricate as you want them to be. I'm just gonna move this over so I can get a fresh spot. You can do these all over the shirt or if you want to make a big one where you just start in the center and just go out and out and out and out and out and see what colors you make. All right, let's try some different colors. How about, let's start off with green. Green is my favorite color. So let's see what we can do with that one. And that's, we're going to let the colors on the first one keep spreading because as it, before it dries, it's just going to keep spreading and keep spreading and go farther and out and it's going to look amazing once it finishes. And actually, you don't have to make a circle. You can actually do shapes and pictures and such. So let me, I'm gonna start this off and I'll let's see if you can guess what, what shape I'm putting in here. All right, we've got a little heart, except we need some more colors in it. We don't want just the green in there. Boy, look at how that's spreading on that. Looks real pretty. All right, we had green. How about what would green and blue look like if they mix together? So let's draw another heart just outside that inside green one. Let's see, what other color should we put together? How about a different shade of blue, a blue-green? All right, we're going to do that outside that one. And I think we need one more color. Let's do some pink. We haven't done that yet. All right. All right. Here we've got some green, some blue, some blue green, and some pink. Now we need Our rubbing alcohol, our eyedropper. Now you want to start in the middle again. Start putting the drops down on the center of the green and it's going to start spreading out. See there it goes. Oh, it starts slowing down. So go ahead and put more on to get it going faster. To get more going. Now let's get some more. And that color is going to spread as the rubbing alcohol spreads on the fabric. And I can see it's spreading out. See some of the colors it started making? Now, if you want, you can still add in some color where you'd started. Let's do a little purple in here. Add some purple. And then add a little rubbing alcohol to get that going. You can see some colors may spread more than others. 
blue seems to spread really well. So that's got it started spreading around. That didn't show up quite as bright as that first one. Look how the first one turned out. Look at all those colors in there. Now to give you an idea of how this can turn out, I did one earlier, did a couple colors. You can see some of the ones like this one. See how those spread out in there? Looks almost like a flower, doesn't it? Or did this one. See? So you can cover this whole thing in all different colors and then just let them merge together and see what you do. See different pad, try different patterns and such and see what activities you come up with, what different kind of pictures you can come up with, what patterns you can come up with. And pretty soon you've got your very own unique Sharpie tie-dye t-shirt. All right? So see what you can try at home. And if you can, take a picture of it and show, it what, show us what you came up with. So, and also don't forget, if you haven't signed up for our summer reading program yet, you can always sign up at evpl.org slash summer. So don't forget. All right? Bye.